Nina, daughter of immigrant parents who arrived in New York in the 1960s to create a better life for their children. Nina's dad was a carpenter, and her mother stayed home to raise Nina and her four brothers. All was great in their family, the American dream within their reach, just as Nina's father wanted. That dream ceased to exist in the summer of 1977 when Nina's dad suddenly died of a heart attack. Within a year of his passing, Nina's family was broken, torn apart by circumstance. Most of the boys had dropped out of school. Some went to work, some went to hustle, some went to jail. Their American dream canceled. Nina's mom, who decided she could not bear the load of raising five children on her own, gave up. She checked out of the process. She gave in to hopelessness. And she did it not because she didn't speak the language or because she had all of a second grade education. And it certainly wasn't because she couldn't work hard or earn money. It was simply because, according to Nina's mother, the family's destiny was prescribed. That destiny was one of struggle and poverty. You see, Nina's mother grew up in poverty as did her grandmother, her great-grandmother, and every generation before that. And despite this persistence, she deemed that all was okay. In her world, you accepted the cards that you were dealt and that you had no right to change them. Her husband's death was just part of the deck. So why wouldn't Nina continue in this cycle? Why wouldn't her brothers? This is the perpetual story so many of our young people hear today. That poverty is normal. That grave circumstances are normal. That generations before them made it out okay, and they will too. Somehow, these young people step into a cycle of poverty where it becomes their ultimate truth. The conversations of possibilities and of success are missing in these young people's lives and somehow they believe that they have to own and live out their family's history. It's almost like an obligation of sorts, like an homage to their parents and their ancestors. In 1990, Nina did something that no one expected her to. She graduated high school. This natural progression in life is normal, but for Nina, it was monumental. It's 2016, and youth in our nations still feel like rock stars when they're able to graduate from high school. That's because youth living in poverty are five times more likely to drop out. For them, college is unattainable. There's this powerful yet silent message that tells them, don't even think about it. So many of them don't aspire to earn a degree. If they do start college, four out of five of them will never graduate. I'm trying not to get emotional about the graduation levels. Today, a college graduate earns upwards of $65,000. A high school graduate earns roughly around $35,000. A high school dropout earns just $20,000 a year. How does someone progress on just $20,000 a year. Factor in children and care, and it's no wonder people can't progress. Can we think about that just for a moment? To graduate from high school, Nina had to go against everything that she was taught, and oftentimes she was made to believe that she was doing something wrong. But deep inside of her, she knew that she was doing something right. Nina went on to earn a two-year degree, a bachelor, a master's, a second master's, and soon she'll have earned her PhD. So what made Nina change her prescribed destiny? She was 13 when her brother William died. He drowned in the Dominican Republic where he had gone to recover after multiple gunshot wounds left him with just one lung. A riptide pulled him into sea, and his compromised breathing could not sustain his struggle to stay above water. 
he was just 23 years old, a victim of direct violence in a neighborhood very much invested in the perpetual cycle of poverty. That was the day that Nina knew that she could no longer follow her prescribed norm. That was the day that she knew that she could either be a victim of circumstance or a survivor of her environment. She chose survival. She was often chastised by her family and the people in her neighborhood who accused her of trying to be better than them. But she forged, a, she forged ahead anyway. Today, Nina has a family of her own. At her table, the conversations aren't missing. There's no discussion about scarcity, prescribed decks, or poverty. There's only discussions of imagine. Imagine what I can do, is what Nina's sons often say. Imagine. By now, you may have guessed that I am Nina. For a long time, I lived in two worlds the one I was born into and forced to accept, and the one I chose to make. We are all malleable with the ability to create the life that we want, and we can change and shift however many times we so choose. We have a choice. We make a choice. We make a life. And that is the essence of life, defining what you want to be figuring out how to get there, and no matter how hard the fight, staying the course. I chose to change my life, even if that meant that I'd never have a relationship with my mother or my brothers. The responsibility of living out the right legacy, of paying homage to my dad, whose biggest wish was the American dream, was what I was destined to accomplish. I am the exception, and my children will live in that legacy. But imagine, imagine a world where there weren't any exceptions, where being like Nina was the norm for all children, where being like Nina was what all children strived to be. So many of our youth today need our help. So many of them need someone to let them know that they are special, that they are capable, and more importantly, that they are worthy. So many of our young people today need you. If my dad, Nina's dad, were here today, he'd say to you what I'm about to say to you. Do you know Anina? If you do, be there for her. Be there for her in ways that no one ever thought she would. If you don't know Anina, find one. Find one and let her know that someone believed in you and that you will believe in her. In life, it doesn't matter where we start or how we start. What's most important is the direction we choose to go in. So many of our youth today need to hear that. So many of them need to know that. All of our youth today need to believe that. So be that voice. Be the person that lets them know. Be the voice that lets them hear, lets them know, and lets them believe. Be that voice. Thank you.